Catholic Views. I'm your host, Renee Kranz. Before I start with our interview today, I want to remind you that this Sunday, which depending on when you're listening to this, might be the day you're hearing this, uh, we have our last caller standing competition with our priests uh, coming up on our YouTube channel at SF Diocese. It begins at four o'clock. Um, so come in and join us. There's all kinds of fun and you get to see priests in a different light than you normally see them. So I hope you'll join us for that. Last Caller Standing, 4 o'clock, Sunday, February 4th. In the studio with me, I have Earl Markley. Welcome, Earl. Hi, thank you. Um, Earl, it, probably many of you have seen Earl. You may not know who he is until you see, if you see him on, if you're watching the video. Uh, Earl is, um, he brings the Eucharistic Miracles exhibit to many parishes around the diocese and outside the diocese. Is that uh, right? Yeah, we cover... We've been in seven, uh, nine states. Oh my gosh, that's a ton. all kind of in the region, or are they all over? Mostly, we've been as far as south as Chicago and as far uh, west as Bozeman, Montana, which is a long that's, drive. Yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> I've been there. It's a long drive. <laughs> so we wanted to have Earl come in to tell us about the exhibit, how we got started with it, and then we're also going to talk a bit about, he does a lot of work with the pro-life, uh, on the pro-life side. So we want to talk about that too. I just found this out. I've I've known Earl for a couple of years while I've been here at the diocese, and ran into him at the Eucharistic exhibit uh, at Holy Spirit in Sioux Falls. And he's telling me all this pro life stuff he does, and I had no idea. So um, <laughs> it's it is this year is critically important for pro life yes, in is. South Dakota. So we want to talk about that too. Okay. So first, Earl, will you just tell us a little bit about yourself first. I know you don't like to talk about yourself. But um, let us know who you are, where you're from, family, that kind of thing. Okay. Um, I grew up at St. Paul's Indian Mission in Marty, South Dakota. Okay. And that's not West River, but almost to the river. Is that yeah, right? Yeah. We okay. were, we were about a mile and a half off the river. Okay. I, I grew up under the arms of 43 nuns and six priests. <laughs> so, you had no chance. <laughs> I had no choice. No. <laughs> um, I grew up there, went to school there. And then I went to college in Brookings, went to the Army till they, they actually shouldn't have took me in the Army because I'd been shot in the leg, so oh, I gosh. can't run, but they took me anyway. <laughs> and then when I couldn't run, they sent me home. They said, oh, sorry. <laughs> and uh, I came to Sioux Falls, got married, and lived happily ever after. Very nice. How long have you been in Sioux Falls area? Since I was 19, which was probably in the early uh, 70s. Okay, a long time. And yep. you live in T now? Yes, I do. Okay. St. Nicholas Parish, which is part of the, let's see, St. Catherine Drexel. I'm trying to remember the past, right? St. Catherine Drexel, Parker, Lennox, and T, right? Right. Did I get them all? Okay. I'm trying to remember the pastorates now because we are changing that a little yes, bit. It's so, all changing. Yeah. yeah. What do you think of it so far? With what? The pastorates. Because uh, I know you're getting probably different priests in your parish here and there. Yeah. Um, it's different. I, I really have been low, low playing that because... Um, my hands have been really full with the exhibit, yeah. and now uh, I, there's a Jericho wall going for this abortion stuff. I told the Lord no many times. <laughs> and he like finally only made it so known. much time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And he, so um, I remember the Knights of Columbus, but I don't go to their meetings and stuff because sure. I'm, just, I'm just not yeah. available. You have a lot of really great things going on, so that's okay. So can you tell us, um, what is, for those who haven't seen it, um, what is the Eucharistic Miracles exhibit, and how did you get started with this? It was really strange. Uh, as if you give your life to God, you're going to see many things happen that you don't understand. But I come home from church one Sunday, and, and while my wife was making breakfast, I started reading uh, Our Sunday Visitor, and I saw an ad that uh, Father Hardin had just brought the exhibit in from Rome. Okay. And I didn't know what it was. Or anything, I called on the phone. I called and asked uh, on Sunday morning, mind you, nobody should be there. But right. I called, and this woman named Carol answered the phone. And I said, Do you have a, something to do with the Eucharist, uh, some kind of miracles? And she said, Yeah, what's your address? And I said, I give her my address. She said, I'll send it to you. So I didn't have any You're idea like, uh -oh. what that meant. No. <laughs> and two weeks later, I get this disc in the mail that I can't open. Oh, right. So I took it to the print shop where I deal with printers and stuff. That's what I've done all my life. Mm -hmm. and, and they opened it and they said, well, there's 160 posters in here. Wow. So they gave me a price to print them. I asked them if they could print them and they gave me a price and 
I didn't have that kind of money, so I talked to a few guys that chipped in with me, and, and we printed them, and then we didn't know what we were going to do with them. <laughs> but the Lord showed us the way, so we started traveling with them, and the way it went. So this is normally, this is not done all over the place. Like, are there a lot of people out here with a, an exhibit like this? There's, um, when I when we originally started, they told me, Carol told me that there were 19 of them in okay. America. Okay. And I think several of them have probably dropped out by sure. now or something. But uh, there's still some going. There's one in Chicago. We just found out there's one in Chicago. They charged $2,000 to come to your parish. Oh, my goodness. And we charged maybe the first two parishes, and there were so many donations. We thought, we got to quit charging. We're getting <laughs> way too much money. <laughs> so, <laughs> what are we going to do with all that? Huh? Yeah, well, really. And when we, the people wanted copies of the, Exhibit mm -hmm. at home, we started printing. I have to order like eight thousand or nine thousand yes. dollars worth at a time, but we've always had plenty of money in the account to do yeah. that ordering. So yeah, you know, um, when I went to the one at Holy Spirit, <clears throat> I did pick up that packet, and I just put them in a binder over the weekend here, mm -hmm. and was kind of reading some of them as I was putting them in. And there's just some really very incredible stories in there. there have not gotten through all of them yet, but. Um, okay, so you, you kind of just told that story like very uh, nonchalantly, like this kind of just happened to you. But I have a feeling that there was probably a little tug on your heart. So what made you do this? It wasn't just Carol sending you a, C a DVD or a no. CD. <laughs> no, the the Lord basically showed us what to do. And I, I have had miracles happening all around this. Mm -hmm. And you know, when you're, when you're doing something and it's the Lord's leading it and uh, the devil's getting in the way, causing problems, and the Lord's clearing the problems out of the way, eventually it doesn't take long for you to realize that he's going with you. Mm -hmm. And he sent a man to work with me. Mm -hmm. And so just like the apostles, he sent us out two, two by two. Yeah. Uh, and so two of us have been doing it for this is our 11th year now. Wow. Yeah, and I just looked it up not too long ago. We've been in 116 places in nine different states. That's incredible. Yeah, it is. And there's, I, I could sit here all afternoon and tell you about stories. Uh -huh. that, uh, we traveled with the Catholic radio station for mm -hmm. a fundraising tour one time. And, mm -hmm. and just can't believe the stuff that was happening, the miracles that were happening. Yeah. Can you give us a couple of them? Because I'm sure this has had quite an impact on people sure. as you've gone around. Yeah, and, you know, some of them are little miracles. Some, one of the things that stunned us the most when we first started is that everywhere we go, we see people crying. Yeah. Uh, they're in there reading the posters, and something touches their heart. And, you know, if you open your heart to God, you're, you're going to get touched. Mm -hmm. and, but uh, when we first started, we ran out of money after we got the posters printed, and we needed easels. Mm -hmm. So... I work in the printing industry. We have access to all that kind of stuff on our books, and I couldn't find a two-sided easel anywhere. Oh, sure. And we needed 80 of them. Right. So I just got to the point where at night when I said my prayers and said good night to the Lord, I said, oh, by the way, remember, if you don't get us 80 easels and give us the money to buy them, this ain't going anywhere. Right. <laughs> and I did that for like two months. Oh, man. Finally, one night I woke up in the middle of the night and I sat up in bed, and I saw two crucifixes turned upside down and bolted at the top. So I, my, Monsignor Mangan was kind of my mentor back then. Mm -hmm. and I called him on the phone and told him that, and I said, you know that might work, and he said, you think? <laughs> go, go get a prototype, he said. <laughs> so I didn't know where to go get that, so I, uh, one of the guys in our church runs a, a cabinet shop. I make. So I called him on the phone, and I said, uh, I know this isn't what you do, and it's out of line. So you can say no if you want to, but I need this. And I told him, explained it, and I said, is that something you could make me a prototype so I could check it? And he said, he thought for a minute. He says, yeah, I'll do that for you. So he made me one. Uh -huh. I took it home, and it worked great. So then I called him on the phone, and I said, um, I don't want to be pushy or anything, but is it, would you consider making me like 80 of them? <laughs> <laughs> And how much would it cost? Right. <laughs> and he thought for a minute, and he says, yeah I, yeah, I can do that for you, and you don't have to pay me nothing. Oh, my goodness. So he took care of both things right there. Yep. I mean, 
that's the kind of stuff we run into all the time. Yeah, yeah, that's beautiful. Um, so how, what about <clears throat> kids when they go in? Uh, I saw, I noticed there was quite a few families mm-hmm. at Holy Spirit when I was there. Yep. Of course, there's lots of families in, in most of the parishes around, uh, in Sioux Falls especially. Um, how do the kids react when their parents tell them about it? Um, the first time we noticed anything with the kids is when we went to uh, Martin, South Dakota. Mm-hmm. They brought all their second graders in because they're going to have first communion. Sure. And at the end, then it was Wednesday night for CCD, and at the end, the teachers made them leave, and they were all crying. They didn't want to leave. Oh, wow. So, and the, and the teacher was reading to them, of course. Mm-hmm. But the next night, when the exhibit opened up, here comes all these kids dragging their mom and dad <laughs> in to read posters to them. Well, that's so great. So, and uh, one of the ones that really shocked us was a Gorman. We, we went to a Gorman, and uh, Joan went to all the religious teachers there and said, we want to bring it in. And they said, no, no, these kids are too wild. They'll knock the posters down. Joan said, we're going to bring it in anyway. So we, br- we put it in. We set it up on their stage. Mm-hmm. And then... Teachers kept saying, when we take the kids in there, the guys are going to be pulling gloves hair, they're going to be hitting each other, and they're going to, there is going to be nothing but trouble. And she said, okay. So we left. We didn't stay there for it. Mm-hmm. And uh, when we come back to pick up the exhibit, the teachers all come to us and said, we couldn't believe it. She said that they were doing just what we thought they'd do till they got to the exhibit. And then they were quiet as a mouse, and we had to make them come back to class. They wow. didn't want to leave. Yeah, this stuff is really powerful, uh, and I think we don't really think about that until we're there, yeah. looking at it, reading it, <clears throat> kind of feeling it, you know, hit you, yeah. which is really important. So this has probably affected you over the years. Absolutely. How has it done that? Well, it's, uh, it's brought me very close to God. Mm-hmm. It's, uh, it's been really touching. I mean, I didn't. I get teary-eyed a lot. Yeah. Walk, talking to the people and watching. Them. I was in front of a group of 120 some people one day talking, and I, they ask people have so many questions because the posters can get kind of over over data. Mm-hmm. And so they come and ask us questions. So we just started putting a presentation on, mm-hmm. and. Uh, at one day, I was giving a presentation to over 100 people, probably 120 people. And at the end of my talk, there, there's a woman sitting right in front of me. She had all these tears running down her, her face. And I usually end the talk and then stay there until everybody leaves. Mm-hmm. But at this time, I, I got up and walked out of the building and went into the exhibit. And Jim came running. He's always up front watching. He came running out, what's wrong, what's wrong? And I said, Nothing's wrong. There's a woman standing, sitting right in front of me, and she and her daughter are both crying and making me cry. <laughs> so, and he said, Earl, I've been watching everybody in there was crying. Mm-hmm. You know, when they realize, and, and that's what I do with my talk, is try to help them realize how this is yeah. really his body and why it's happened. Yep, yep, So. yep. I'm so glad you do this around the diocese because it's so important, especially during the Eucharistic Revival. Um, I know a lot of parishes have had you in recently. Mm-hmm. Um, where can they find a schedule? Can they find that somewhere? We, where you'll be? We had a website to start with, but nobody ever went to it. Okay. I mean, everybody always called us, so uh, they get our name from somewhere and, <laughs> and uh, call us. So, in fact, the matter is, uh, this morning when I was driving to town, a guy called me from Brookings. Of course, yeah. And somebody called him uh, from a parish we haven't been to and wanted to know how to get a hold of us. So, it's just kind of word of mouth. Okay. So, if it hasn't been at your parish lately, maybe have them reach out to Earl. I bet they know how. And if they don't know how, they can call me. Sure. I know how to get a hold of you. (laughs) Yeah. Um, Okay. So, if you just joined us, we're talking to Earl Markley. Um, Earl, let's move on to the pro-life work that you do. Um, I don't know a lot about what you do. You described it to me a little bit the other day when we were at Holy Spirit. Um, Can you tell us what you're doing? Yeah, there's a group called Jericho's Wall. I used to pray the rosary at the abortion clinic. Mm -hmm. When the Roe versus Wade turned down, then they went to the courthouse for a while, and then finally they quit doing that. Now they're still doing it up in Hartford, I think it is. And I go there once in a while on Mm -hmm. Tuesdays. Um, when this vote 
started coming about, the Jericho's Wall decided they they need to address this. Because yep. the, the way we looked at it is the, the parish and the churches are addressing it one way, and the right to life people are addressing it another way. Mm-hmm. And we said, we want to address it biblically. Right. So we're addressing it with biblical address. And uh, the three of us together, maybe we'll get enough votes to beat this down. Right. Because right. what's being told about this vote is not true. Right. It's, yes. it's false information. When in Ohio was trying to do it at uh, Towards the end, they had $25 million come in. Mm-hmm. We're hoping to raise a few thousand dollars to address it the way we want to address it, biblically. And we kind of look at us like being uh, David and Goliath mm-hmm. because we ain't never going to come up with $25 million. No. And we kind of set up a program where we can spend as much money as we get. As long as we can pay for what we're doing, we'll keep going. And when the money stops then that's where we're supposed to stop. Right, right. So what we're doing is is a several-part plan. Um, first of all, um, we're going to start putting billboards up. I've been putting the Mary billboards up around yes. town. Yep. So I know Maria. Guess who's handling me? Maria. <laughs> so I, <laughs> I went in there the first day and asked her her name, and she said Maria, and I said, I, uh, sh- I should have yeah. known. <laughs> Nothing is an accident. And right? I was I was going to do that for a year uh-huh. uh, until the vote, the last vote, four years ago. Right. Still right. going. Right. As long as the money keeps coming in, I keep putting them yeah. up. But, <laughs> but anyway, uh, we're going to start the attack with billboards. And I called her, and she said, we usually rent them out a month or two before you want them up. And I said, will we be able to do that in September, October? And she said, no, they'll be gone. And so I said, well, what can we do? And he, she said, I'll twist the rules a little bit. And uh, if you give me the money now, I'll lock on to them now. Wow. I'm actually locked onto a billboard I've been trying to get for four years, and it's so busy I can't get it. I'm locked onto it now. Oh, that's great. And I'm, I'm renting for September, October, which will be the two right months before, before the vote. The vote. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Another thing we're doing is uh, I've been in touch with the the Marty Mission where I grew up. Mm-hmm. It's still down there. The mission shut down, but they have the cathedral, and there's uh, uh, people there with the Indian people working with them. Mm-hmm. And I call. I went down there actually and talked to Sister Miriam, or not Sister Miriam, her helper, because she was on vacation. Mm-hmm. But uh, they're excited for us to do a pilgrimage down there. Oh yeah. So we want to put a pilgrimage together, a bus pilgrimage. We want people to sign up, and, t- and we'll take as many buses as we can get on it. And the people down there are really excited. The people in Wagner and Danny, want to. they want to, and this blew me away, they said, we want to walk from Wagner and meet you at, as the buses come in. Oh, wow. So, I mean, I don't know how that's going to go. We haven't, <laughs> we haven't been working on that part. We've been working on the bill, billboards right now. Yep. But we also the next thing we've done is Larry came up with this idea of a, a voting baby. Okay. In other words, he's asking people to sign up to say a rosary every day till the till the vote comes. Yeah. And the day that we start is February sixth, right. which would be nine, nine months, months before the vote. Right. And that's going to kick off if everything goes according to plan, and I hope it does because there's going to be a lot of people coming. I think. Mm-hmm. I got called this morning. Uh, he wants to kick it off in the cathedral basement on the 6th of February at okay. 6.30. And I had people call me this morning. They want to put a, a caravan to come. Oh, nice. So, I mean, I think it might be good. But Good. Uh, so we're doing the voting baby, and we're doing the billboards. and, uh, and Pilgrimage, hopefully. Pilgrimage. And then the last thing we're doing is that we want to reduce the billboards down to the postcard size like the oh, politicians sure. send out yep and then we will mail them i was involved in mailing for a big share of my life and we want to mail them to as many catholics as we can around the country mm-hmm. and the post office or the mailing company can just pull up names of catholics and so we're going to put a billboards in she, uh, maria said they could put billboards in every city in south dakota nice and we can mail to all of south dakota mm-hmm. So we're going to put up billboards, and we're going to mail out until we run out of money. Very nice. And if, if we get enough money, we'll cover the whole state. Yeah. 
Okay, so uh, just a reminder for people, we're just about out of time, but um, this is for the uh, bill that they want to, or the amendment to the Constitution that they want to pass, which Correct. would add abortion to our Constitution and be about impossible to remove. So um, that is what you're fighting. How can people, do you have a way that people can donate Absolutely. and or find out what is happening with that? Uh, they can call me or they can call Larry. I have their the phone numbers on here. Okay, here. Yeah. I will. We'll put those in um, in the description of the video, and yep. you can always reach out to me at the diocese rcrans at sfcatholic.org to get those numbers. Right. Um, any other way online that they can reach? We're working on a website, and they hope to have it up very shortly. Okay. Uh, and it'll have a place where you can click a button and donate to it right on the website. Okay, great. So, so we'll fact, try to keep getting that information out. Um, maybe keep an eye on our social media for the diocese on okay. Facebook at SF Diocese, uh, Instagram. We'll try to, um, if you can get me that information, we'll pump it out through there so people can okay. find where you are and what's happening and donate if they wish. Right. We're also going to put it on YouTube. Okay, uh, good. Deacon Thien is pretty good about yes. that. And he's He said he'll work with us, and so we want to put all that on YouTube. And Great. We'll get what the Lord brings. Yes. You know? Yeah, that's all we can do, right? You know, and I heard that the deep state, or not the deep state, but the, the abortion people sending money into Ohio. I just heard the other day that one of the ways they promoted the vote was to um, put on a billboard a picture of a man kneeling at the altar right. of the church, yes. thanking God for abortion to help his family. Yep. It's very so, deceptive what they're doing. So, so um, we need lots of prayers. Yep. or that we can defeat that and um, just just help out however you can. So I'm glad you're out there doing this work, Earl. Well, um, we really need you out there, so I'm glad you're there. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm glad. Actually, the truth of the matter is I told the Lord no a couple of times. <laughs> he just doesn't let you go, does he? <laughs> no, he didn't. he didn't let go of me. So. No. <laughs> thank, yeah, thank you so much for coming in. I really appreciate it. We'll get that information um, out on our social media and uh, wherever we can get it. So um, hopefully people will come out and look for it. So Good. thanks again for being uh, here. You're welcome. Glad yeah. to come. Yeah. So if you haven't found us already, you can find us at SF Diocese on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and at YouTube. So be watching for that information uh, from Earl. That's it for us today. Hope you'll join us again next week for more Catholic Views.